Today we are going to start talking about factoring polynomials. The first factoring technique that must always be followed before any other factoring technique is common factor. So remember, whatever polynomial you get to factor, you always do common factor, no matter what. Before we start talking about common factors, let's talk about expanding, just to refresh our memory. Let's expand the product x times x plus 3. In the previous lessons, we showed that to expand this one, we can use the arrow method, which is the same as distribution. So I'm going to distribute x inside the bracket x times x gives me x squared and x times plus 3 gives me 3x so the expansion of x times x plus 3 is x squared plus 3x now what exactly is factoring it is the opposite of expansion this means that if I give you this, then you have to be able to give me this back. x squared plus 3x is equal to x times x plus 3. Factoring means going from x squared plus 3x to x times x plus 3 and expanding going from x times x plus 3 to x squared plus 3x. So, we are going to do another example here. This time we are going to expand 5x times 2x minus 2 minus x. So again I use the arrow method. I get 5x times 2 is 10x and 5x minus x gives me minus 5x squared. So again, we learned so far that if I have a product of two binomials, 5x and 2 minus x, I can expand it and get 10x minus 5x squared. But now we are going to study the process of going from 10x minus 5x squared to product form which is 5x times 2 minus x. We call this process factoring, which is not that hard. Now before we start talking about factoring, we will talk about a new term. It's called GCD, which is greatest common denominator. Now the question is that how do you find GCD? First of all you use GCD to find the GCD of a series of numbers or the GCD of a series of terms. But how do you find the GCD of a series of numbers is simple. What we do is that first we express each number as the product of its prime divisors. Remember, by definition, a prime number is a number which is divisible by one or itself. So the first few common prime numbers are one, three, one, two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, and so forth. You can see that each one of these numbers, you can only divide it by 1 or itself. No other number you can find that is divisible. For instance, 9 is not a prime number because you can divide 9 by 3. 8 is not a prime number because you can divide 8 by 2 or by 4. Now, when you divide all these 
numbers that you want to find the GCD you are going to find the product of all the common factors with the lowest exponent the number that you get is called the GCD of those numbers it's a very very simple process and it's used when you do your factoring let's do a couple of examples let's say I give you numbers 12 and 8 and you are asked to find the GCD between 12 and 8 so again I'm going to write 12 and then find all the prime factors the first prime factor that I try to divide 12 with other than 1 you are always going to start from 2 so 12 divided by 2 gives me 6 again I'm going to start from 2 6 is divide, divisible by 2 so I'm going to divide 6 by 2 I get 3 now 3 is not divisible by 2 but it's divisible by 3 and I get 1 I'm going to stop right there so I can write 12 as 2 exponent 2 times 3 I do exactly the same thing for 8 8 divided by 2 gives me 4 4 divided by 2 gives me 2 2 divided by 2 gives me 1 so 8 is 2 exponent 3 now if you look at 12 which is 2 exponent 2 times 3 and 8 which is 2 exponent 3 the only common base is 2 and the least or minimum exponent is 2 so we say that GCD is 2 exponent 2 which is 4 which makes sense in fact you could find this one without even trying to go through dividing by prime numbers but when you're dealing with uh, bigger numbers this technique helps another one is 6, 18 and 24 again 6 is divisible by 2 I get 3 so 3 and then 1 so this one is 2 times 3 when I go with 18 18 is divide, divisible by 2, I get 9, then 3, 3, 3, and 1. So I can say that 18 is 2 times 3x1 and 2. And 24 is 2, 12, 2, 6, 2, 3, 3, and 1. So we can say it's 2x1 and 3 times 4. Oh, and, uh, times 3 now if you look at these three numbers the common base is 2 the minimum exponent is 1 because of this and there is another base common which is 3 so we say 2 times 3 and again the minimum exponent is 1 because of either this or this so 2 times 3 gives me 6 and you can see 6 divided by 6 is 1 18 divided by 6 is 3 and 24 divided by 6 is 4 so that's how you can find the GCD of a series of numbers now the next example asks us to find the GCD of two terms very simple you, ca you can look at y cubed and y x1 and 7 you can see that y is the common base and the lowest exponent is 3 so you can say that y x1 and 3 is the GCD of these two terms now we are going to talk about the main topic which is common factors To 
to do the common factor, what you do is that you are going to find the GCD of all the numbers in the polynomial and all the GCD of all the terms and then you take the common GCD of the numbers and the terms out and then divide every term by the GCD. That's what it's called common factor. But remember, it's very important that the common factor is the first step of any factoring technique. No matter what the technique is, you do the common factor first. So let's see how the common factor works. I have the polynomial 8x squared y cubed minus 12x4 for y. And I'm supposed to find the factor of this polynomial. First, I look at the numbers. I have 8 and 12. Forget about negative. I just look at the absolute value of the coefficients. 8 and 12. The GCD between 8 and 12 is 4. So I take 4 out. Now I look at x squared and x exponent 4. The common factor is x, but the minimum exponent is x squared. So I write x squared. Then y cubed and y. The common factor is y, the minimum exponent is 1. So I say the GCD between all these terms, these two terms, is 4x squared y. So I write a bracket, open bracket, then divide every term by 4x squared y. So I write 8x squared y cubed divided by 4x squared y minus 12x4 y divided by 4x squared y. This is equal to 4x squared y now, 8 divided by 4 gives me 2, x squared divided by x squared gives me 1, and y cubed divided by y gives me y squared, minus 12 divided by 4 gives me 3, x4 divided by x2 gives me x2, y divided by y gives me 1. So the final answer becomes 4x squared y times 2y squared minus 3x squared. And as you can see, this is very easy process. But again, I repeat, the first step of any factoring technique is common factor. So let's do another example. We are supposed to find the factored form of this polynomial. First, we can see that between 2 and 4, the GCD is 2. Between x cubed and x squared, we have x squared, which is the lowest exponent, 2. Then between y4 and y2, I have y exponent 2. And between z squared and z cubed, the minimum exponent is 2, so it's z squared. Now, I am going to divide everything by 2x squared, y squared, z squared. But I'm not going to, like before, write you know, the fraction. I'm going to divide it mentally. 2 divided by 2 gives me 1. x cubed divided by x squared gives me x y exponent 4 divided by y ex exponent 2 is y exponent 2 and z squared divided by z squared gives me 1. Now the next term. 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. x squared divided by x squared gives me 1. y squared divided by y squared gives me 1. And z cubed divided by z squared gives me Z. And this is my 
factored form of uh, the above polynomial. Another type of factoring is factoring by grouping. This is when you have brackets involved, which are exactly the same thing. It's not going to be a single term, but it's going to be a bracket. Probably the best way you can understand it is through an example. The question is, factor 2x times x minus 3 minus 5 times x minus 3. The, the mistake that majority of students they make is that as soon as they see the brackets, they start you know, uh, using the arrow method and they would uh, try to expand 2x and negative 5 in the bracket. If they do that, they are going to end up with a quadratic and by this point, they have no idea how to factor this one out. What you have to do is just look at these and then try to somehow use the brackets which are exactly the same. If you look at this example, you can see that x minus 3 is the same in two terms. To make life easy at the moment, since this is your first time doing it, let's say I say that y is x minus 3. Then I can write above as 2x, but x minus 3 is y, so 2y minus 5 times x minus 3 is 5y. Now if you look at these polynomial or binomial, you can see that first there is no GCD between 2 and 5. The first term has x, but the second term doesn't have x, so there is no common factor of x. But the first one now has y and the second one has y, so I can factor y out. So I can write y open bracket. Now, 2xy divided by y gives me 2x. Minus 5y divided by y gives me minus 5. Now I can replace y with 2x minus 3. So this becomes 2x minus 3 times x minus 3 times 2x minus 5. Now, without introducing a new variable y, we could do this one in the first shot. We can see that x minus 3 is common between these two terms, so I can factor out x minus 3. Now, I'm going to divide first term by x minus 3 and the second term by x minus 3. So the first term becomes 2x x minus 3 divided by x minus 3 minus 5 times x minus 3 divided by x minus 3. Now, the first division, x minus 3 cancels out with x minus 3. The second division, x minus 3 cancels out with x minus 3. And I'm going to end up with x minus 3, 2x minus 5, which is exactly what we got last time. So either for simplicity you can use another variable like y if, if it makes it easier for you to do it or you can do it without even using the new variable. This technique is called factor by grouping. Now let's do another example in this example, I have to factor this binomial. You can see just by looking that y plus 1 is common between the two terms, so I'm going to factor out y plus 1. But before I continue, remember, there is no GCD between 3 and 7, and x and z, there is no GCD. So if I divide everything by y plus 1, 
3x times y plus 1 divided by y plus 1 is 3x. 7z times y plus 1 divided by y plus 1 is 7z. And that's the final answer. The next example is bx plus 3x plus by plus 3y. Now, to do this example, I will take the first two terms and the last two terms. The first two terms, there is no common factor between b and 3, but x is common, so I take x out, so I get x times b plus 3 plus. The last term, I can take y out, so I get y, open bracket, b plus 3. Now, if you look at these two terms now, b plus 3 and b plus 3 is common, so I can take b plus 3 out, and I get x plus y. So this is my final answer. But remember, at any point, you can just expand this one using the arrow method, and for sure, you will get the original polynomial that we started with. The next example is ax plus ay plus 2x plus 2y. Again, I take the, the first two terms and the last two terms. The first two terms I can take a out. I get x plus y. The last two terms I take 2 out, I get x plus y again. Now if you look at it, x plus y is common in both terms, so I take x plus y out, and I get a plus 2, which is going to be my final factor. for. Our last example is a polynomial with four terms. I'm going to take the first two terms and the last two terms. The first two terms, the GCD between 9 and 5 is 3, and the GCD between x squared and x is x. 9x squared divided by 3x gives me 3x. 15x divided by 3x gives me 5. And the last two terms is just 3x plus 5. There is no common factor here. Now, if you look, the first and the second term, they have 3x plus 5 common. So I can take 3x plus 5 out, so I get 3x plus 1 because when you divide this guy by 3x plus 5 you get 1 so the final answer is 3x plus 5 times 3x plus 1